Hello, welcome to the Freitas Effect podcast. My name is Simon Freitas, and I am here to talk about conversations with creatives. So these episodes are brought to you in collaboration with Entropy Theater for Entropy Fest themed emergence. If you are wondering what Entropy Fest is, it is a collaboration and a celebration of local emerging artists in the New England area for, well, for your own entertainment, for your enjoyment, and for artists to emerge into the world. The Freitas Effect will be emceeing on the weekends of the 20th through the 22nd of May and May 27th through the 29th. Ticket information is going to be available on all our social medias as well as on Entropy's social media platforms and in the description of these episodes most likely. <laughs> but here with me today is one of the artists of Entropy Fest, so Lee Feel free to introduce yourself to the audience however you would like them to know you. Sure, yes. My name is Lee Balzer. I live in Brookline, and I, she, her, hers are my pronouns. Um, and I'm just so excited to be part of Entropy Fest this year and to be talking with you right now. Yee! This is awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I know that you have, I can see on the screen, it says, through me to you puppetry. So you're a puppeteer. I am. I am a puppeteer. I have been doing puppet shows since I was like five years old, you know, um, you know, uh, bending down behind the couch and making my family watch puppet shows <laughs> ad nauseum. <laughs> and um, as far as professionally, though, I started, God, over maybe 10, 15 years ago with my first attempt at this career that I think honestly back then I was taking myself too seriously and I wasn't having a lot of fun with it. And that doesn't work so well if you're a puppeteer. So <laughs> I tried to get a job in the real world. I was a teacher for a little while. I had master's degrees and all that fun stuff and did other kind of real world quote unquote jobs that um, honestly, you know, chewed me up and spit me out. It, they, I, I'm not cut out for the real world. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I, I ended up after losing a couple jobs in a row. And I'm not a job losing kind of gal. I'm a, you know, type A, was a type A people pleasing, you know, do whatever I can to make things work. Um, once I lost those jobs, I thought, oh, okay, I think the universe is trying to tell me something. So mm -hmm. I sat down literally and figuratively for, I don't know, a couple of weeks and said, all right, what's going on? Well, what is it I really want to do? What, what would I do if I didn't have to earn money and just what am I supposed to be doing in the world or want to be doing in the world? And that's when the puppetry came back into my life. I said, I want to do puppetry again, but this time take it down a notch, not have original scripts and sets and music and all this, all this stuff that I really couldn't manage all alone. I said, let, let me think, can I do puppets, maybe reading stories to kids where I don't have to come up with original scripts. It's more about just the performance. I could do it at libraries that already have a story time built in. Um, kind of a built-in audience, um, and let me see what what that could look like. So I I, I um, took this idea to a local librarian in Cohasset on the South Shore. This was back in like 2014, and she said, "Oh, that's a lovely idea. Would you like to try it out? You know, just well, as a volunteer, I was doing this just to you know, just to see um, what would happen. I'm a firm believer in do what you feel like you need to do, and don't worry about the money, yes. and that the money will come if you put out." your truth into the world and and it did i mean i wasn't doing it for volunteer for long she quickly you know was starting to pay me she she shared my info on her library listserv which led to other paid gigs and um it's just been a, a beautiful ride with a lot of bumps from there but i've just so i'm so grateful every day especially during covid and getting through covid still as a puppeteer and able to kind of make ends meet doing what I love. Um, I'm just so honored and grateful that to be able to do what I do and do my passion and make money. I know a lot of people aren't able to do that. So I'm, I'm just like overwhelmed with gratitude every day. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I just, I love how even you mentioned, like at first you felt like there was kind of a structure you had to follow and now you're being more of an authentic artist and it's brought, you more joy and it's supplied you an income that is not selling your soul you know it's being yeah. just your true self i really love that right and another thing something that i i realized i had a mistaken belief about when i first started this work is that my idea 
of a puppeteer, a real puppeteer, is someone who builds their own puppets and mm. performs. And I realized, and I didn't perform for years. That's when I went into the working as a teacher and doing other real life jobs. Um, mm. Because I thought, well, I, I, I'm really not a puppet builder. That's not my jam. I don't have the, the skill sets that that requires. That's a whole other level of different types of creativity and amazing talents, you know. And I realized after, I don't know, years that that's just a false story. That's not true. I mean, you don't you don't have to do everything. You can't do everything. There's people that build puppets that don't perform, you know, and there's, mm -hmm. I think, the rare person that does both. But... Once I let go of that mistaken belief of what a real puppeteer is um, and just said, I'm going to use the puppets I already have and, you know, buy buy more online or not buy, adopt more puppets mm -hmm. online or whatever, that that really freed me up to do what I really love doing, which is performing. It's, it's about like really, I think um, part of it, part of the path is just. Yeah, being true to your real self and my real self was not a puppet builder, it was a puppet performer. I relate. I took an intro to puppetry class in college and holy gosh, like building puppets is not easy. So <laughs> although uh, I am curious, when would you so when would you say you first identified as an artist or as a puppeteer or I'll first ask as an artist? That is a great question. Um, I'd say like last month i mean it, mm -hmm. it's very recent that i've felt even remotely comfortable with that um with that description of myself um i would use i would say when people ask me i would say i'm a puppeteer but and then follow it through with something else like uh, but i also do this and that like i had to justify mm -hmm. that it wasn't enough um an artist i just artists to me are um right up there with teachers as like the number one thing in the world that we need and artists are just I I don't know I just think of them as um not me <laughs> I don't know but a friend of mine who himself is an artist has was referring to me as an artist and I thought at first I pushed back on that label I'm like that's not me I'm not I'm I'm just this kind of wacky zany lady that likes to do puppetry that can't stop doing it like that <laughs> was a thing I can't not do it it's I'm thrilled to meet people that that really respect what I do because my family, God love them, <laughs> mm -hmm. they probably pay me to not do the puppets around. You know? <laughs> and they're like, "Could you please not bring them to Christmas? Can we <laughs> take a break from Newton and Sam, and can we just be like ourselves around the, the dinner table?" So um, I, I really um, I didn't get a whole lot of support as an, a burgeoning artist growing up, and my family is not an artist type of family. Um, and, um, you know, so I think I just more recently where I really I think during COVID mm -hmm. where I had a bunch of part time jobs, as a lot of artists do to make make it work, to make ends meet. And all those jobs fell away during COVID. And the only thing I was left with was puppetry, which, of course, also fell away. All the in-person gigs fell away. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it was, you know, it was um, kind of a do or die time of, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to try to make this work in COVID? Or um, when in, in not just COVID, but, um, you know, when we were all quarantining in COVID and or are you going to try to get some, I don't know, job where you're working online through Zoom or some sort of nine to five thing or, you know, what are you going to do here? So I it was like where the rubber met the road. I, I really um, I hired a marketer. I took myself a lot more seriously. I certainly had all the time in the world to do this. And um, I quickly pivoted to, you know, doing Zoom puppet shows, live Zoom shows, and learning Final Cut Pro to put out asynchronous material on YouTube, you know, mm. videos, uh, puppet story time videos. That was a fun learning curve. Every other day I'd be, you know, on Facebook yelling and screaming through Facebook or Instagram like, God dang it, this fucking program, how do you make the thing do the thing? <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> but it was worth it. I learned a lot through Final Cut, through that process. I'm not a pro at Final Cut Pro, but I can make a video, a, a watchable video at this point. And I think through all that is when I first started thinking myself of more of a, a, an artist because that's, and yeah. I also had to learn, because I was a one woman show and still am, I do all of it. I do the photography, well, not of all of it. I have, a, I have a great professional photographer that's helped me out, but I do a lot of photography myself, all the video work, all the audio, all the website stuff, you know, the lighting, everything. So I'm sort of a 
jack of jack of all trades jacqueline of all trades yes um, with all that as well and so yeah i guess with when when i'm doing lighting and audio and web design and puppetry it's hard to avoid that title i'm like okay i guess i am an artist yeah all right all right mm -hmm. <laughs> so i heard you mention how growing up you would do all the puppetry shows behind the couch and then you know your family kind of <laughs> has gotten tired of it i i know the feeling uh, my <laughs> sister and i would always do the little <laughs> those showcases at all the family reunions but how have you <laughs> educated yourself with your artistic skills Lately, I have been taking classes at the Puppet Showplace Theater in Brookline. That's one of the reasons I've always wanted to live here. It's the, to me, it's the mecca of puppetry. It's Puppet Showplace Theater is just a beautiful mm -hmm. theater. They're one of, I think, the oldest theaters in the country that, that does only puppet shows. And it's a beautiful group of people that are part of that community. So what they put out to the community, plus their adult workshops that they do in the evenings. You know, I've learned a lot in a short time from some of the classes I've taken there, especially Veronica Barron. But other than that, though, I, I didn't take any college classes. I wouldn't really say I've had mentors growing up. I have had mentors growing up, but not uh, puppet mentors. Um, mm -hmm. The mentors have been more general of just people that I r love and respect, watching them live their life, living out loud doing what they want and need to do in the world and, and to, to, that would allow them to be their highest and best selves. And those are the kind of mentors I've had, but not so much actual puppet mentors. Um, I think, I don't know, I just, I like I say, I just, I can't not do it. So what people, and I think that's one of the reasons it was hard for me to consider myself an artist for so long, because it, it comes easy to me, the, the puppet performance. It just sort of happens. Sometimes I feel like I'm just channeling almost. And mm. people are like, wow, you must have really studied that. You you must have trained a long time to do that. I'm, and I'm not even doing ventriloquism. It's just, you, I'm not trying to hide my mouth not moving. It, it's moving. Mm -hmm. But um, I said, no, I I don't know. I just do it. They just, it just comes out of me. And they're like, wow, that's, that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, that's interesting. Because when I heard you say how you couldn't stop, I, that resonates with me of being an artist, like when I stop acting, I really, I feel like a part of my soul is dying. Like when I'm not in the theater, it's like, <laughs> no, I need to be back in there. And it's, I feel like that's how I fully, you know, really knew I could identify as an artist because it was like, when I first stepped into the theater, I was like, this is my place. So it's, you know, that's such a opposite side of the spectrum of like, well, this is just what I naturally do. So I, you know, I could not label myself as that. Like we were both on two opposite sides, but now we're both here in the identity. This is great. Right, uh, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but another and thing- And I feel oh, really sorry. blessed to, also, I'm sorry, I feel really blessed to be, um, to not understand when people have a struggle of like, what, is, what do I want to do in the world? Mm -hmm. My struggle has always been, how can I make money doing what I'm meant to be doing in the world? But yes. the people that are like, what, what do I, what would I like to do? Well, what, what do you, what's your passion? What is it that gets you up in the morning? What's the thing you can't not do? Mm -hmm. You know, and I guess maybe not everybody has that. I don't know. I just, um, so I'm very, again, I feel blessed and grateful to have a clear path. I guess I take that for granted maybe sometimes. Mm -hmm. I heard you mention before how you had a photographer that you had been working with. Um, so I'm curious, have you had any, uh, have you experimented with any other types of art forms or collaborated on any kinds of projects with different types of uh, creatives or different artists? Actually, that is the that is the one thing that I really feel like I'm missing in my world is doing more collaboration with other artists, um, whether they're other puppeteers or whether they're actors, dancers, musicians, uh, photographers, multimedia type people, anything. I'd love to collaborate with more with people. Uh, no, it's mostly been just me doing this. I had, yes, I worked with a photographer to, it was more about getting marketing, you know, stills going, mm. not so much making a making a project together. I have experimented a little with spoken word, just very little. I, I'm part of an adoption um, support group called BPAR. I'm adopted. Um, it, it's a, called Boston Post Adoption Resources, BPAR. They're mm. great. They're in Brookline as well. And um, I wrote a spoken word piece for one of their performance nights, and which I ended up submitting to Entropy Fest, actually. It's called um, My Birth Story. 
adoption, loneliness, and puppets. And it's sort of about how I came, my version of how I came to be a puppeteer, besides the fact that I was five years old and couldn't, couldn't not do it. But, um, you know, why puppets versus another um, art form? And, and I, I have been a kind of a, um, I wouldn't call myself really a professional photographer. Don't tell the people that are hiring me to do photography <laughs> work. But, I, I mean, I know photographers, and I have photography skills, but I would not call myself a professional photographer. Um, I love photography. I did study that in college and studied um, web design. Um, I've taken music lessons throughout my life, you know, piano lessons, violin lessons. I took some Ooh. acting classes in undergrad. I think at one point I wanted to be an actress, and then... I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's a deep part of me that still wants to do that. But puppetry is acting. It's just not yeah. me. It's kind of the best of both worlds. I can get, you know, fat and old and it doesn't affect my ability to be hired. Mm -hmm. but, you know, my my appearance, which, you, you know, for actors, that's part of your instrument, your body. My instrument's my puppets, although they wouldn't like to think that. They like to think of themselves as autonomous beings on their own. Uh <laughs> But yeah, I I would love to. That is my dream is to have a kind of a a group of other artists that would like to collaborate on things, and that we just, you know, from wh whatever project that people are working on, they pull from each other and each other's talents, and kind of have a, you know, a um a community of artists that we all can be working with each other on different things. Like, to me, that's my dream. I would love that. I just love how you mentioned too the how like through puppetry you were able to connect to the resource for uh people who have been adopted in Boston like that is because you know that that resonates with a core part of you know your identity and how being an artist is just really being able to express your truest self so uh, yeah yes. I just yes so speaking of something that you have sent in for Entropy Fest can you tell us what you are presenting at Entropy Fest Yes, yes. Um, so for Entropy Fest, I am presenting um, a spoken word piece called My Birth Story, Adoption, Loneliness, and Puppets. It starts off with my kind of adoption story, not so much like, you know, I was left on a police doorstep in Korea uh, type. Th it's not like that so much as just kind of what it felt, what I felt like growing up being adopted and the loneliness that I felt which I, I mean, everybody feels lonely at times mm -hmm. in their life. And certainly teenagers certainly feel lonely. But I felt like I had a market on loneliness <laughs> growing up, you know, not to be a victim me about it, but just, I don't know, there's this, there's this place I've learned through my adoption group called the nothing place, mm -hmm. the nothing place where it's like a black hole of, it's not even a, it's nothing, it's nothing. It's, you're, you're just this it's lonely times 10 you're it's past lonely you know you pass lonely down the elevator when you're going down into it it's deep and dark and it's hard to get out of and um until they started talking about this i thought i was the only one mm. and um so part of it was about that not knowing that that was what it was called when i wrote the piece part of it's about adoption and loneliness and then well how do i combat that loneliness what do i do with that loneliness you know i can let that overcome me and, and, and affect and inform my life in negative ways and become a victim of that or find a way to not only deal with it and try to heal it, but in a way that that is fun and expressive and, you know, a creative and the puppets, that's where the puppets came in. So, you know, like I said, my family, I love them, but they were not the most supportive people growing up with the puppets and everything. And I think I might have created these puppet characters and, and before I had these puppets because I think my oldest puppet that I have in my life right now is about 15 years old and I've been doing wow. this for way longer I've had stuffed animals as kids or even pets that you make voices for and mm -hmm. you know have a whole other personality like you know um, we've probably all done that we have cats or dogs or things like that stuffed animals where my friends and you know I created I had imaginary friends and so part of the Entropy Fest piece is about that type of dealing with loneliness and then parlaying it into as I grew up and realized I don't fit so well in this world when I try to be a, a, a nine to fiver. Um, I, just, I just feel like there's something wrong and broken with me because I don't really fit into that a mold. Finding a way to make ends meet, to pay the bills and not sell my soul and, and still be healing this lonely you know, thing inside of me 
I'm like, oh, puppets. I can make money and still do what I am supposed to be doing on this planet and help my own personal, you know, growth of healing this lonely pit. So that's sort of what the Entropy Fest piece is about. Oh, I love that, especially because at the beginning you were mentioning the nothing place and it sounded like such a dark and, you know, alone and, you know, it, it's just this really, uh, like, I, it resonates with me. Like, you know, when you're in this place where you just don't think anything else can save you and puppets, mm -hmm. when I think of puppets, it's always like colorful and a bunch of them and, you know, mm -hmm. like such a differentiation of voices and, you know, that like when you hear it, then you're just like, wow, like, what is this? And it, you know, it kind of brings you into the light. So it's exactly yeah. it's bringing the darkness into the light. Exactly. <sighs> yes. I love that. I love that. I never really thought of that that way. So thank you. That's so true. And, you know, we all have different sides of our personality. Not every not anyone is any one thing thing and I feel like it's I feel so again grateful that I can explore different parts of my own personality with you know Newton the the ham and, si and Sam the neurotic one and Holly the obnoxious one and Blue Sky the sweet one and you know Scramby the quiet one and I can be all these different things which are all me mm. it's like different parts of my personality just with different fuzz and fur colors you know it's <laughs> it's not just about me it's about what I'm giving to the community and yes. sharing that joy with children and, and their families is just, you know, that is a, a, a high that of life that, mm. you know, I can't replicate with any kind of substance. It's just like, that is, that is life to me. That is the point of life, connecting with people, sharing joy, building community and that spark, you know, that there is nothing more fun than when a kid comes to my puppet show that's a little shy in the beginning, that doesn't want to say hi to the puppets or give them a high five or anything. And they're just very shy, hiding behind their mom or dad or caregiver. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the show, they're coming up and giving the puppet a high five and wants to give him a hug and is telling him about their dog at home and, you know, like just having a whole relationship with the thing that they were scared of 30 minutes ago and yeah. uh, it's just it's a beautiful transformation just to watch in real time it's, it's just lovely do you perform mostly for children yes mostly for children although i'd love to at some point do an adult puppet show that would be so much fun some sort of a little bit more you know adult and raunchy or something i think that would be <laughs> so fun <laughs> so i'm putting that out there universe you hear i get you hear it it's, it got the call it's working on it <laughs> as we speak <laughs> <laughs> um so that's a great question where can people find your work to help you produce your adult puppet show <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you that's a great question um i have a website through me to you.com and all my contact info is there and all my social media is there but we're on we because it's me and the puppets of course it's not just me <laughs> we are on instagram facebook youtube all with through me to you puppetry you can find us um YouTube especially, we have over 80 videos. We just did a three-part series on joy, um, and I really like how that series turned out. Um, it was really, well, it wasn't always joyful to make, and that was the point of the whole series. It's sometimes, joy is not always and forever. You have sadness, you have anger, you have frustration. It's important to feel all your feelings and let them out and let them go and let them flow through you, and you know, um, it's kind of all good in the end. When I was making this, the second piece on sadness, and well, actually it wasn't on sadness, it was on what, yeah, how to find joy even when you're sad. I was extremely sad when I made that piece, and it was like life imitating art. It helped me, making that piece helped me find joy in my own sadness. <laughs> so that was really, um, that was just cool on meta and very, very cool on different levels. And same with the third piece as well. It was about the joy of working together, and at the time, I was not finding a lot of joy working with uh, was my son who was helping me out. He was not in a joyful place either. <laughs> we were going through a very rough patch. And we've by the end of it, in the outtakes of that video, we were laughing our butts off. So um, it was it was exactly what I needed to make those videos about those subjects that I was living through in real time, in real life. Um, so art is healing, as you know, Simon, as yeah. an artist yourself. Yeah. It is healing in so many ways. Oh, it can be so therapeutic. Yeah, especially when you're working on the kind of subject that is so specifically emotion work like that, uh, that, yeah, it really can just get to the core of it. And, you know, it, it helps you get that release. 
Is there anything that you are working on now that you haven't mentioned so far? Um, right now, I'm just working on trying to get my word of mouth out there to be booking more shows throughout the summer. I'm not really working on any original pieces, although somebody just asked me about original piece that I thought, oh, God, I don't have time for it. But maybe I should be that might be an invitation from, you know, from that librarian and the universe to get my creative juices flowing again. So I think what I'm going to be starting to do is I do puppet story time where the puppets read the stories, already existing stories to the kids. But what I'm starting to feel called to do is do story, but also add in, um, you know, a few minutes of just a riff between the two puppets based on what we just read, maybe a kind of a mini lesson that goes in that, in that um, performance. So I that, yeah, that would be really a fun thing to work on. So it's part pre written material part my my own stuff. Um, kind of a hybrid. I think that would be really interesting. I like that too, because how you mentioned before you were a teacher. So, you know, it's kind of pulling back on the experience that you've had and experimenting on your artwork. So exactly. I really like that. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of our puppet videos are that they're not just the puppet reading the story. It's a puppet reads the book. Then we have a little mini lesson, a little kind of Mr. Rogersy mini lesson. Yes. And then, a, and then a song. A lot of them were original songs we wrote that were based on the book. So the whole thing, people really should check out the YouTube, especially um, through Me To You Puppetry on YouTube, because I think there's stuff, there's little gems in there that are for adults, too. When you're watching it with your kid, it's not just stick them in front of the thing and let them, you know, they, you can do that, too, of course, if you need to get stuff done. But there's <laughs> something in there for adults as well, I believe, in, in our um, videos. Yeah, a, a lot of it's about self-empowerment and self-love. And what adult adults need that more than kids? Kids actually do love themselves. It's they learn to un, love, not love themselves over time. Mm. I think through society and expectations, and you know, well-meaning parents with high expectations or whatever, it the self-love kind of gets dampened down over the course of time. In my experience of myself and watching others, I think um, you know the the adults need the help with the self-love, the permission maybe um, to do what they love, to say no to things they don't love, you mm -hmm. know, to be able to, to, to be more intuitive about their lives. And, you know, I really think your intuition is never wrong. Your real intuition is never wrong. And to follow it, follow your, follow your heart, follow your bliss. It's a, it's, um, it's a saying, but it's true. If you can do that, allow yourself to do that, even a, even a little bit, you know, the sky's the limit as far as I'm concerned. And I truly believe the universe will, will support you if you're doing what you really love to do, especially if it's for something that's helping other people. There's no way you can fail in my mind. There really isn't. Oh, I love that. I especially <laughs> love how you mentioned that the message for adults isn't just like a a hidden joke that's kind of, might be sexual or it might be you know overtly like some kind of reference from the 80s or something it's like a no you need to love yourself like you need to learn these things that children already know how to do and you're teaching your children not to do this like we all as a society need to unlearn these things because adults have messed up and the babes, you know, like through the mouth of babes, we have like, you know, our truth. So yes, exactly. I, uh, through the it's... Mouth of babes, right. Our children are our teachers, honestly, you know, we think we're theirs because we're older and we've had more years on the planet. And yes, we feed and clothe them and give them the basic needs. But if we're, you know, paying attention, they're the ones teaching us. Mm -hmm. Oh God, this is, I just feel and so, <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to give a shout out to my son, who I won't name you by name, son. I know you don't want that out there, but um, I love you to death, and I couldn't do this without you. And um, he is also not a puppet fan, oh. but he helps me in, in all the puppet, <laughs> all the puppet videos. He's God love him. Um, he's earned his wings and then some. So, son, nameless son, I love you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Put that out there. <laughs> Oh, I'm so lucky that I had you on this episode. Oh my God. I am just, uh, I oh, do not have. The luck is mine. The fortune is mine, Simon. I am so grateful. This has been a fun, are, are we done? This is a, such a quick half hour. This is like, felt like five minutes talking to you. <laughs>
Thank you so much for being here on this episode. I really appreciate all the answers that you've given to us. And if you would like to see Lee's puppetry and all the puppets that were mentioned on today's episode, definitely come to Entropy Fest on May 20th through the 22nd and 27th through the 29th. Azab and I will be hosting. Azab is making her own episodes as you are probably seeing them be released in real time. I am not in real time. It is March, 2022 right now. And Lee, would you like to say goodbye to the audience? I would love to say goodbye to the audience. I hope to be able to meet you in person in May during Entropy Fest performances. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Simon. This was so much fun. Oh, I'm just so glad we were able to do this. Have a great day.